Hey everyone, welcome to the program, WRSA Radio. I am your host, Grenadier One. As always, I hope you are having a good week. What a crazy one that we're having out there. Uh, I began this week with uh, a hope that I would have an easy one. <laughs> uh, you know, smooth sailing through work and, and personal stuff and, uh, you know, just be able to finish a book I'm reading yeah, take care of a few things around the house. You know that that that's kind of what I was, that's what I was looking for. That's what I was anticipating and and wanting. Um, well, that lasted about an hour on Monday morning when uh, some crazy things hit at work, and and it's been uh, been kind of hectic since then. Uh, and, and then we got the information that Tucker Carlson got canned at Fox News, and I knew that I would. Uh, you know, I would have a topic that would be that would be part of the show this week. So at least I I had something to talk about. So that that kind of that made it okay, I guess. But uh, anyway, uh, so we'll jump right into that in a minute because I want to touch on something um, uh, different and and a bit personal at first. I had a rather odd experience last night, uh, <clears throat> and it kind of fits in with some. Of the other things, or some of these type of things that I've seen a few, a few social media posts about, um, I, I've seen more than one person mention this over the last few weeks and talked to a few people face to face, even that have also kind of iterated that they they just had this general feeling that something is happening. You know, something is looming out there and and about to happen this this is more than just this sense of dread or foreboding uh it seems to be maybe something at a spiritual level something ominous that people are feeling you know down in their down in their nuggets down in their gizzard uh well last night something odd occurred and and i brushed it off at first um because it was you know i was half asleep uh but after I had some food and caffeine this morning, uh, I, I'm I'm rethinking this in the context of what those people have mentioned. I I had a very strange dream, uh, and that's not exactly unusual. But but let me let me explain it, and you can kind of evaluate it for yourself. Um, first, uh, about 25 years ago, uh, I, I had a cousin uh, who passed away due to cancer. She had breast cancer. Um, she was in her late twenties, uh, and, and she was misdiagnosed and the cancer spread. It got into her lymph nodes. It was very, very rapid, got into other parts of her body. Uh, and what resulted from that was that from the time that she, it was discovered when she was finally correctly diagnosed to the time that she passed away was, it was a very short time. It was about six months. I, I, I'm, I'm working just on memory here. I think it was about six months. Uh, very tragic. And, and her mother, my aunt, had a very difficult time dealing with that for, for many years. Uh, now, I do not often think of her. She and I were not very close. Uh, she was about six or eight years older than me. And, and we just didn't really see each other that often. They they lived out of state for much of my life, and um, so it, she was just not somebody that uh, that I really had a, a whole lot of contact with. Uh, I did like the guy that she was married to. He was cool, um, and and we got along and talked about all kinds of things like guns and stuff. And and but at at any rate, she she she's not crossed my mind in a long time. I have not thought about her uh, in quite a while. Well, last night I had a dream that I walked into my grandmother's old house, who my grandmother has been dead for many years as well, uh, and their house sold and, you know, I haven't been there in 20 years either, but uh, at any rate. Uh, so in this dream, I walked into my grandmother's house to visit her, and there stood my cousin. And she was she was older, but she was alive and well. And, and she hugs me, and she you know, proclaims that she's alive, and, and the whole thing had been a hoax. It was faking her death to protect her from something. And and in the dream, I was just overcome with emotion, just just far more emotion than I, I would actually have in reality, to be honest. Uh, and that reaction was very unsettling to me. It it made me step back, and, and I just, I 
came to, to understand or have this sense that this was not right, that, that something evil was going on here and that I was being manipulated. You know, something was provoking this emotional response to try to drain me f in some shape or f fashion. That's just the sense that I got over this. And, and when, I, when, I, when that hit me, it was like, bam, and I woke up just immediately after that. And, and just kind of had this, you know, very strange feeling, but I, I just chalked it up to being, you know, had a, just, just a weird dream, okay. And, and I went back to sleep. Like I said, it was, it was, it was late. Um, but now that I'm awake and, and I'm aware and, and I've had some time to think about it, I, I really think that something indeed was going on there. This was, this was an encounter or possibly an encounter with, with something malicious. I, I don't know. It's just, like I said, in the context of, uh, what other people have said about having this kind of deep feeling that something is going on, it just felt, felt rather strange to me. Um, I, I just, it's an odd thing to happen, but it, it it puts me in the mind that something indeed is lurking out there and about to break the surface. I I, I don't know we I, but I think we are being beset from every direction here, and every field is a battlefield. Uh, it, it's very odd for sure, but uh, make of that what you will. Uh, I would just say and advise to to keep your wits about you. Uh, you can be assailed on on many fronts. So anyway, moving on to the main topic this week, uh, and that is corporate and alternative media. So earlier this week, I had a chance to catch a live stream from one of the, uh, I guess she's a bigger name over on Gab. She she goes by L or uh, some bitch I know. That's her handle. Don't blame me. Uh, anyway, she has a she has a decent followership and, and does this live stream uh, a couple of times a week. So I had logged into Gab and I saw that she had updated her status to show that she was about to go live. And I thought, okay, I'll give her a shot. I, I have seen her post, you know, that she was doing a live stream. But usually when I would catch it, it would be a couple of hours later. And I'd say, well, I'm not going to watch that because I'm not going to get, you know, involved in, in a show that has been going on for a couple of hours. You, you, you just miss too much, okay? So... Uh, this was the first time I'd really got to sit and and start from the beginning and and listen to her. Uh, it was interesting and and she got me thinking, so that's always a positive, I guess. Um, I can't say that her style is for everyone, um, but but it's a live stream and that that can be a very chaotic format and and disjointed kind of presentation. So that's something to take into consideration. Uh, but but maybe go give her give her a listen on your own uh, because she's she's clearly a smart girl uh, and has her mind going in the right direction and and I think she makes some at least on this episode she made some very good points and, and like I said she got me thinking um, she hit on something that got me in the mind in light of this news about Tucker Carlson being let go from Fox uh, she was she was presenting an idea she had. Uh, or has for a kind of template or uh, quick way of gathering together data to present it in a narrative fashion. It's sort of like a plug-and-play kind of thing. Uh, and, and to store that information, it, what, it, what it really amounts to is, is basically an intelligence collection and analysis tool, uh, which is focused more on sort of the big players or the big events that are going on. At least that's what I think she was getting at. It was not really all that clear, and I did not, I did not stay for the last ten or fifteen minutes of the, of the sh the show because something I was doing, <clears throat> was going on, something else I was doing. Uh, but I, I think that's what she was she was getting at there. It seems like a very interesting idea. It's something that that I've seen um, replicated or attempted in the past. Uh, in other platforms. But at one point in the presentation, she hit on something about alternative media that really resonated with me. Uh, she said, basically, what, it, what is it that alternative media offers? You know, what do they bring to the table? By and large, what alt media does is present the same stories and topics as mainstream media does, but they just do it in a you know slightly more spicy flavor. They they have some some spicier language, if you will, or 
Uh, maybe it's a little bit of a different take on it, but it's the same topics. And it's a very good point. And she was, she was lamenting the fact that mainstream media are still driving the content and driving the narrative for alt media. And alt media is reactionary to that content. Alt media is not producing original content of its own and creating its own narrative. And she was working towards, uh, you know, what, what she believes was a way to kind of tackle that and, 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 and solve that issue, at least maybe on a small scale, which, you know, again, that's, that's commendable. Uh, I think she's doing a good job and, and I wish her well in that endeavor. Um, it's a very thought provoking statement though. And, and one that I'm in agreement with, uh, a, a good bit. And, and I can explain why that is the case largely, but it's still a fair point. Uh, outside of a few outlets like, uh, James O'Keefe, and, and I'll use his name instead of Project Veritas, but, uh, or, or some of maybe the smaller regional websites that still function like traditional journalists, some of the, I, I, I have in mind the, the, like Rocky Mountain News and some of these sort of smaller, um, media they're kind of like newspapers, but the, the digital version, right? Uh, they, they're, they still function like traditional journalism, but they have more of a conservative or traditional American viewpoint. And there are very few of those. Uh, all media creators that, that, you know, have the resources and money to do their own investigations are few and far between. Outside of the, that little small group, there's not many of them that have that kind of reach. We just, we just don't have people knocking down our doors to become reporters uh, or investigators. Um, people don't want to work for, for likes and subs, okay? Uh, if you look at those you know, outfits like The Daily Wire or, or perhaps uh, The Blaze, you know, really they're right square in the, in the zone of mainstream media. You know, they, they, they're, they just happen to be on the right side of mainstream media. Uh, but as you move further right in, in your viewpoints, which is what I mean, very quickly you get into live streams and podcasts and people who are self-funded and, you know, small or solo operations like myself. Uh, we just don't have the money or the people to dig up our own stories and, and run down these rabbit holes of information to uncover uh, deeper truths, if you will. It happens on occasion because people have a passion project or something that they, they pour themselves into, and those sometimes find their way into the light, but that's, that's very rare. But that is that is something that I think we can do to change the situation. We, uh, you know, when we see those kinds of stories or researchers who have dug into something, uh, share it. <laughs> you know, get get the info to someone who has a platform so that it, it can be re, you know repeated out to a a broader awareness. I think that's what uh, L is getting at, and and what she's trying to do there with the the tool that she's trying to put together is is make a way for people to, uh, you know, gather that and share that data and that information that, that becomes the, the nucleus of a story. But we need to become better repeaters, even if that tool doesn't exist, better retransmitters. You know, I, I had this as a topic on a show a few months back about, you know, using whatever mechanism that is in place on the platforms that you happen to be on to, to boost the people that promote and represent our ideas and our culture. But let's also do this to stories and ideas that we think are not getting any kind of time in the spotlight. It's a very grassroots way of doing this, but, but you know, that's, that's how we have to operate when we don't have millions of dollars funding us. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, any podcaster or streamer would love to have the money to hire dedicated researchers and assistants who can help them, but we know that's not the norm, that, that's the exception, so we have to work with, with what we have. And maybe that's the challenge that I can throw out to you guys, um, all of you listening. Uh, if you have a topic or something that you think needs to be explored, put in some of your time into it uh, to do that basic overview, basic assessment of it. 
uh, the, the preliminary research to make sure that there's, you know, actually some substance to it and, and, and that it's really a thing. And then send it to someone who has a platform. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be me or, or even Concerned American over on the mothership. Just pick any one of the people that you interact with uh, and reach out to them with this information to see if they can amplify it and bring it to the attention of their audience. Um, I just, uh, you know, Elle has a great take on this, and, and I, I, wanted, I want to iterate on it and, and, and grow it. Like I said, we may not be able to um, have that good tool in place yet, uh, but, but this is still something we can do, okay? This is an aspect of 4G warfare. When we see good ideas, we share them and we repeat them. And you modify them where needed and you share it back so that success can be duplicated and failures can be corrected. You know, abandon the things that aren't working and pick up the things that are. That are. Um, we are in an information war and it's full scale at this point. Which brings me to the other aspect of this topic, and that being Tucker Carlson. <laughs> Uh, as the title of the show indicates, I'm already a bit tired of hearing about it because I think it's a it's a negative for us to be placing so much hope and attention on one person in this kind of position. This is not where uh, you you want journalists to be or media personalities to be. They are not the people that we should be looking for two or four leadership. They are there to provide information. Uh, you, you look at them as the same way you would look at an intelligence gatherer, you know, an, an intel organization. That's the kind of role that they, they function as. Um, Carlson um, represents a lot of things. Um, He's, he's kind of the other extreme of the situation. We, we waver from, from not paying attention to the small voices out there that actually uh, best represent us and reflect our ideas and culture to almost idealization of the most widely broadcast and vanilla representation of us. Uh, he's a lot of things to people on our side. He is truly the only person in the mainstream that even approaches the viewpoints that constitute what I can, I can really only say as ours. And, and I'm, I'm putting that in the air quotes. He, he does that with, you know, very professional and likable and watchable style. Uh, he pulls in viewers and exposes them to what, at least what we see as truths as what we know them to be as truths. And by doing so, I think he has utility. He, he's very much a way to start people down the pathway to enlightenment. And, and I think he has done that for a lot of people along the way. Uh, and I also think that he will continue to serve that function. Uh, he's, he's the, the spoonful of sugar that helps the medicine go down, if you will. But as we know, too much sugar is not a good thing. And we have to be cognizant of that with people like him. Uh, Silver Death, uh, who is uh, another blogger, a poster over on Gab, and uh, he pointed out yesterday on a very good post and repeated it on his, his blog uh, called The Death Guild. Uh, Carlson is a gatekeeper. Uh, over the last few shows, I've, I've mentioned the term, the, the lines on the road to serfdom, and that's what people like Carlson serve as. He's He's that right line on the road. He is as far right as respectable people are allowed to be. So it's not a wonder that he will speak our language a little bit and, and echo some of the things that we believe. That is his role, even if he's not fully aware of that. Uh, it, it, is, it is the role. It is what he is, is there doing. It, it remains to be seen if Carlson has truly stepped away from all that or if you know, he's just evolving his platform in an effort by the establishment to play goalie to those of us who are further away from the guardrails, kind of a last-ditch effort to prevent us from going full fry corps uh, and taking the fight outside of their control measures. 
I, I hope that he's seen the light and, and possibly has had a conversion. Maybe his, his long-term exposure to the inner workings of the media and the, the Washington machine have finally worn him down and, and put him in a place where he's had to make a choice. Maybe, maybe he had a nighttime visit from a dead relative or a friend uh, and decided that he wanted to go down on the right side of history after all. I don't know. I, I can't say what the inner workings of someone in his position are. Uh, I know he looks happy zipping around on his golf cart down in Florida, so there is that. And I do know that people need to stop kvetching over it and, and get on with their own things. Uh, this man has plenty of money, uh, so he will be just fine. If he never worked another day in his life, he'll be fine. Uh, I don't think we've seen the last of him, though. This is, you know, speculation that is out there that he's possibly going into politics, which I don't, I don't really see. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think that's the the, the goal for him or, or the vision of what he's going to do. Uh, I suspect that he will be doing something very much like Glenn Beck and putting together his own media platform, perhaps, someplace that he can continue doing what he is doing, but, like I said, maybe reaching a little bit further out of an audience uh, to, to kind of bring some people back in. I, I don't know. Uh, if that happens, though, we'll, we'll have to judge him by the content that he puts out to really kind of get the best measure of, of what he truly is and what he truly represents. Uh, and what he what is not said by him will be more important than what is said, uh, if you if you catch my meaning there. I don't know, I don't know. What what do you guys think about it? That's all I got time for. So uh, like and subscribe. Come see us over on Gab and the Mothership, and I will see you on the next episode.